Hello, I am so glad to be welcoming you to the fifth season of the CPTSD podcast. I'm Tabitha Bird Weaver, and today inside the podcast, we're going to be talking about acceptance, especially in terms of CPTSD or maybe chronic conditions, and how to process what content you need to process in order to have acceptance, because acceptance can be hard. Uh, so before we get there, though, I just want to send a personal message out to two uh, specific people. One is in light of the fact that we're going to be talking, we are going, let me enunciate, we're going to be talking about medical trauma in a mini series on the CPTSD podcast because it is a big deal and it seems like it is happening more and more frequently or maybe we're just talking about it more, but I'd like to get into it a little bit. And so Kelly, whenever you are ready to record that uh, session we talked about, let's do it. I'm ready for you. And the other personal message is to one of my listeners who sent me a voicemail. Lacey, I've tried to contact you a couple times. The voicemail was kind of warbly for some reason, and it didn't translate into the text either. So would you please shoot me a message and let me know if it's okay to text you? All right, I'll see you inside and we'll get a conversation hopefully going uh, about acceptance. You can also watch this on YouTube and as usual, please like subscribe and all of those things before we even get rolling so that we can get this information out to people who are suffering. See you inside. <music> To the CPTSD podcast episode one of season five. I'm Tabitha Bird Weaver. I am licensed as a professional counselor and a marriage and family therapist in the state of Oregon. I am so pleased with the amount of feedback and um, and appreciation feels great too for this work that I'm putting out. I'm really glad that it has served you. If you have any questions or ideas for what you might be interested in learning about, please go ahead and email me. You can just click the link right below. It'll take you straight to a form. It'll be hopefully easy peasy. As you can tell from this uh, video today, we have some amazing sunlight going on out here in Oregon and I sure needed it. It's felt pretty gloomy lately. I want to talk about acceptance today, and there is definitely more to the topic than what we're going to be able to cover today, but I just want to tell you a little bit about an experience that I had over the past several months and see if it can at all provide insight or support for you, because I know I'm not the only one. I know, uh, you know, there's a lot of us in this boat called CPTSD and or another type of chronic condition. <sighs> It gets tiring after a while to have to keep doing the same thing over and over, especially when you already know all the things there are to know about it, or so you think. So that was my experience in summary, and I've had that experience many times throughout my life. I have a lot of chronic conditions, and uh, the way CPTSD ties into those chronic conditions, like an uh, autoimmune disorder, um, chronic pain from a series of car accidents, those things, whew, that gets old. And I'm really just, I'm guess even just talking about it right now, I'm feeling the burden of that. Like, ugh, I don't want to do it again. And, and I'm putting on a good face for you because I don't like this more than I'm showing you right now, just to be honest. What happened is I um, had an escalation in some back pain and then I had a standard procedure that ended up creating more medical problems for me. Uh, and I know that happens every day. And so I just want to be clear to all of my providers, and I know a couple of you listen to this. So all of my providers were excellent. As individuals, there was not medical trauma that occurred to me as individual um, providers to me. They were all very caring, very professional, and um, took care of me in a way that I thought was supportive and nurturing. That being said, just going through medical anything is traumatic for me. And I know it's traumatic for a lot of you. And the reason that it is just, I like, I don't even want to think about doing it. I avoid making appointments because I don't want to do it. 
And part of that is because I've had a lot of physical trauma in my life and I don't feel good. And so it's hard to imagine getting up and going someplace anyway. And don't get me wrong, my, I have good days and bad days, <laughs> just like everyone else in this situation. But regarding medical appointments, I don't like them. And a lot of that is because I don't feel like I've been heard by 90% of the people that have worked with me. Now, they may have heard me in a very narrow window about a narrow, very narrow topic, and so their behavior was appropriate, the information was appropriate, but there's no experience that I can really recall except for individual, some very specific individuals where I felt connected with in our medical system and where I felt heard in our medical system. And I'm not going to go through the stats because you can look them up super easy on your own about Number one, chronic conditions being dismissed by the medical industrial complex. Number two, women being dismissed by the medical industrial complex and a lot of marginalizations around disabilities as well. So this is a huge topic and it's not my area of expertise. I'm just telling you about my own experience, which is I don't want to when it comes to medical stuff. Um, so <clears throat> I have been being treated that was, again, my English. I think I'm a little triggered, so I'm just going to take a minute and arrive more and just be here a little bit more. I hope this is helpful modeling for you, uh, me being aware that I'm, I, I heard my speech accelerating, my body was getting tight, because medical trauma has a lot of impact on our life experience in a lot of different ways. Where I was going is I have been seeing a chiropractor and this is one of those people that is trusted. I feel very listened to, seen, heard, understood, and I feel like the treatment is really specific to me. Not going down a checklist of what the insurance company expects you to do, although I'm sure she's doing that too. But she's paying attention to me and the specificity that I require as do we all, we all deserved to be seen and, and listened to as individuals. So this person that I trust um, had a really cruddy conversation to have to have with me. I'm grateful that she was willing and basically told me that I'm not gonna be exercising, for the, not in the way I have known that for the rest of my life. And um, that I probably will be doing chair exercises. So there's a part of me that's like, screw that. Nah, -uh. I'm going to overcome and I will. I will take it to the best of my ability. But also there's just hard fact to torn ligament and disc problems and, and arthritis from seven car accidents. There's just reality to the fact that my body has been damaged. So thankfully, I'm still allowed to do chakra dance because I think I would do that one way or the other. And if this is the first time you've heard me mention chakra dance, please go look it up immediately. It is one of the best healing modalities I have ever experienced or used with people, both on a physical and a spiritual level. And so it's beautiful. There's my plug for chakra dance. Um, that was a hard pill to swallow, that I am limited to chair exercises. That is a huge restriction. So I had to accept that all of the plans I have for however I'm going to handle issues with my body now require a huge adjustment. And so does my perspective because I have internalized ableism and I keep thinking somehow I'm gonna work my way out of this, even though I know I won't, and I know that's not true. So for anybody that's feeling internal conflict about that kind of stuff, I'm here with you. So that was one pretty big blow to me and, um, and I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so then after that, uh, at the end of December, and mind you, my family moved Christmas so that I could do this procedure. So we're waiting on Christmas, which is already not what I love. Um, I just like having that day. 
which I realize I could have that day every day. But, you know, anyway, I've bought into the propaganda. My point here is we're already denying ourselves something that we enjoy. And in order to get ready for this, I had to do some, uh, like, fasting and and basically taking a medication. And so I took some pills. And wouldn't you know, after the procedure, which the first one didn't go, so I had to do it again. So that's two times going under a local anesthetic, or not a local, but like a, a mild anesthesia. I'm not sure how else to say that. It just turned into a dang ordeal. And it seems like everything medically with me turns into a darn ordeal. And if you feel that, I get you. You're not alone. And it stinks. So, by the way, this is not necessarily an uplifting uh, episode right now. We're going to get there though. So bear with me while I complain. After this procedure was done and everything's fine, <laughs> just in case you're worried, I could not stop throwing up to the point where I was in the ER twice in one week. And I'm not a throw upper, if that's a way to say that. So, and my partner was really worried. He had never seen me this ill before turns out that the medication I took gave me an ulcer so so there's that like my body can't even handle something that is standard because she has been overused and injured repeatedly during this lifetime so I guess I'm sad about that also I'm sensitive and so it could have been that anyway so I had to come into acceptance that for me, I'm medically complicated and I don't want to be that. You know why? Because we're judged and we're judged in a bunch of different ways. And so I have been denying, I think, the severity on some level of what's going on just with my body. And I want to tie this back to ACEs because remember, those are adverse childhood experiences and I, my body didn't have a shot at being healthy and normal at all. First of all, I have some, you know, ADHD. So there's genetic things afoot with that. But I also had a lot of neglect, right? One of my, the first pictures that I have of me that I know of, um, I was one and a half or two sitting in a high chair and I have a huge cast on this finger my pinky because I had cut it pretty severely I still have a scar I also have a scar on my right foot right below my big toe where hot metal from welding bounced and hit me injury I, I that was at about two as well and so I'm sure you can see the neglect of having a barefoot child around you while you're welding I'm feeling a little sad for her right now. <clears throat> if you have had experiences like that, and I'm just talking about physical injuries on top of neglect, your body has been in fight or flight your entire life. If you're listening to this podcast because of your childhood experiences, your body has been in fight or flight and probably then dorsal vagal shutdown most of your life. And that is hard on our bodies. It really tanked out for me around the age of 17, 16, 17. Let me think about that. 14, 15, 16, 17. One big thing annually for those years, which are remarkably formative, and you're trying to feel normal. Um, I had problems, horrible menstrual cramps. So there's that. Uh, I had to be checked for an ulcer because I was having so much pain in my abdomen, which I think is probably was aggravated like that. There wasn't an ulcer found, but I was in knots all the time. So in order to treat that, my mom chose to go with herbs instead of medication. Um, she also chose to do that with my brother for a diagnosis he has. 
and I'm not opposed to that. I'm glad she took action and she introduced me to one of the most foundational people in my life. And um, Catherine Corwin, if you ever hear this, I still love you and I thank you. She taught me how to tune into my own self. And what she told me as an herbalist is that my body at 15 years old was in shutdown. My, I, it was called adrenal fatigue and we still say that, but that was the going term back then and then chronic fatigue. At 15 years old, I had already tapped out my adrenal system. Um, That sounds painful, and it it was. (laughs) And after that, I got mono, and Epstein-Barr has been with me ever since, which is a major underlying virus to a lot of autoimmune things. So you can see how things stack not only with maybe abuse and neglect, which is awful, but also with the circumstances around you and the consequences of that abuse and neglect. And that's why when we think about CPTSD as layering, that is true. It is abuse, 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 and neglect, 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 harm, layered. But it's also interwoven. And so that is messy and it's like this big root ball So all of these things add to the layering of trauma, right? I was at the doctor a lot. So here we are, me realizing um, that I have long COVID. Uh, My body is breaking down in ways where I must preserve it instead of work it. And I told my partner just last night, which is the motivation for this podcast today, I feel like my body is like on our last nerve with me and my, the, the, my, what my perfectionism requires, the, the level of work, which I've been trying to reduce and have reduced. And again, I hope you're relating to this because even if everything isn't exactly the same, I'm trying to show you the interlacing so that you can come into acceptance gently. So I'm a mess is the bottom line. And and in fact, when I reframe it, looking at all of the things I've experienced and the chronicity, seven car accidents is unusual. That's a lot of damage to my body. And I'm still here and I'm not in a wheelchair. And not that being in a wheelchair is bad, but I value my mobility and I don't want to lose it. And I am losing it. I just got a little teary there. Part of coming into acceptance for me has been just having to look at the facts on paper and understand that they make sense. And that if it was somebody else getting that information, the way I would want them to respond to themselves is not necessarily what I do, right? I would want them to be gentle and accommodating and nurturing. And I do do that for myself, but it takes effort because I still have all this programming that drives other behavior. So when we're talking about chronicity and acceptance and reality, That is a lot of different plates to try and manage at one time. Plus, you know, you're having your daily life. You still have to do everything that you normally do while these big things are processing through you. So what do we do? I've chosen, and it took effort. So I, I want you to know I'm saying this to you after I've already gotten there. It wasn't this pretty about a week and a half ago. I've chosen to go for gratitude and accommodation uh, because that's where the science is. And um, we know that when we recognize things from a positive perspective, that we tend to be more solution and goal focused versus helpless or hopeless. And so I am going to do what I can do. And that means accommodating myself. And not doing it the way I used to, which was to overextend and overpush. 
The other piece is to start looking for accommodation. So gratitude and accommodation is where we're headed. If I know that working six hours in one day is going to eliminate anything plus add pain to the next day, I'm motivated to not do that. Even if I feel ashamed because I should be working harder. And I know a lot of you out there have that thought that goes through your head. It's kind of an American thought in some ways. But that doesn't work and it's going to make me worse. And so I had to accept a new baseline. And your new baseline is accommodation. Also, that's a nurturing and loving thing to do for yourself, right? So for me, I recognize that if I overdo at all, my body shuts it down. Like parents coming home to a party. I don't even know where that came from, but you know, okay, shuts it down. I told uh, my partner, Brent, the other day that after I had overworked and then paid for it for three days of joint pain, that I feel like my I'm down on the ground and my body has a stiletto against my throat saying, stay down. And so I have driven her to that place. And so I'm going to obey and I'm going to stay down. And for me, that means just slowing down and also managing expectations around perfection. So where in your life do you recognize that you are fighting against something because you want to better yourself or, or because you want things to improve? Okay, I'm not, we're not judging the motivation. Just the approach. Is it actually working for you to continue to do things the same way if it results in damage to you or to other people if you're applying this beyond the physical medical stuff we're talking about? Right? One of the decisions that I've made, and I'm going to have to accommodate myself by getting help and by also knowing that I'm choosing to do something I don't want to do for my betterment, not because I'm supposed to do it, right? So I am highly motivated after this last experience to be more consistent with my medical appointments and to go through, ugh, this is the one I really don't want to do, but I'm going to, to go through medical providers until I find one that is good for me and listens. And so I think I'm getting ready for a lot of first appointments. So let's wrap up. I, for myself, am having to come into acceptance in two different ways. One is my body doesn't do that. And my body isn't going to heal the way I've wanted it to. I can't subtract car accidents from my body. I can only treat it and keep trying to heal and keep it safe. So there's acceptance that this is the new baseline. And there's also acceptance that I need to do some things differently and there are things I don't want to do like make medical appointments because they feel I feel avoidant of that because it's usually traumatizing. So I need to accept that I don't want to do that yet. It is good for me to do that. How can I make that happen without all the distress? So we've got acceptance of new baseline and acceptance of accommodation so that you are okay. So the baseline about acceptance or the bottom line about acceptance is that if you want to progress, acceptance is required. Please remember that doesn't mean you enjoy it, you condone it, you agree with it. None of that is required for acceptance. I'm not enjoying this. Obviously, it hurts, right? But I can agree that it's reality. So that acceptance piece for you is always looking for where you're denying something. For me, what I was, what I've been rooting out psychologically is my internalized ableism and that I should be able to do things a certain way. It's a very limited view. I 
openly acknowledge that. And yet that internalized piece is still there and it's very deep. So if you feel like you've gone through all of this before and like I do, I've done this before. I've dealt with medical trauma and my awareness of it before many times. If you feel like you just don't want to do it one more time, I understand. So take the space you need to figure out how to come into acceptance that you're probably going to do this again. You're probably going to have something come up that is complicated. And just a word to those of you who have people in your life that have chronic conditions. The best thing you can do for us is just listen and let us know you understand it sucks or is hard, however you want to say that. Unless people ask for advice, please don't offer it because we know that already. I guarantee you, we already know all the things you're going to say to us. And we're really glad it's working for you. Please just listen and offer empathy. I'm hoping that we're going to have some more conversations about medical trauma and what you can do to insulate yourself from it. We're also going to be talking with some really interesting guests. In the meantime, if you are interested in figuring out how to get going in therapy for CPTSD, please download at least the free handout about how to find a therapist. But if you want to really dial in the kind of therapist and the kind of therapy that you're looking for, please consider grabbing the CPTSD toolkit. Uh, it will walk you through the therapies that actually work for CPTSD because that not all do. And in fact, some are harm, harm, harmful. Ooh, took a while to find that word. Some therapies can be harmful for CPTSD. So if you want a little more information about how to find somebody to help you out, um, click the link below and you can head over there and uh, download the free guide and or buy the toolkit. I hope it helps you. I appreciate you tuning in and I will see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.